Hey everyone, this is Rick Terrio, your main real estate guide. And today it's uh, late August and I'm on location in the town of Lakeville. And what we're bringing to market today and we're about to go take a look at is 30 surveyed acres that's up behind me right at the top of Lombard Mountain. So it's a, it's a beautiful off-grid location. There's uh, real mature wood on it. It hasn't been logged in well over 40 years. And so you'll get the chance to see some really nice, nice looking uh, timber. It's a real private location. There is <clears throat> a right of way road that goes part of the way into it. You do have the right to extend that road if you wish, but right, right now, for the most part, what's uh, available to access that property is really an improved ATV trail uh, that terminates on the, on the property. So it's uh, it's a nice nice looking piece of property. I was here a couple of days ago and I had a chance to take a look at it. Uh, today I'm back with my camera equipment. And we'll take a take a walk and show you uh, show you all the all the the, the beauty that uh, can be had here. Now um, um, this property is 30 surveyed acres. It's coming to market at thirty nine thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars, and I mentioned it's off grid. So let's head off some of the questions I'm going to get uh, from. Uh, you folks out there, uh, they're gonna, you're going to ask, can I get utility power? Well, where my truck is parked right here, we are two and a half miles from the closest utility line. And if you can afford to put utility power, run it two and a half, th which should actually be three miles to the property, you probably want to buy something a little more expensive than a $39,950 lot. This is an off-grid location. It's a great place to build a cabin, to have a tent platform, uh, You'll have majestic views if you cut a few trees up there where, uh, on the top of Lombard Mountain where you can see all the way to Mount Katahdin. It's a, it's a beautiful property, but it's, it's really an off-grid recreational location. So with that, I'm going to grab my pack, grab a bottle of water, and we're going to head up to the top of Lombard Mountain. So this is the, the footprint of the road heading up uh, Lombard Mountain, and we've got about 250 feet of elevation change that we're going to be uh, <coughs> accomplishing here in the next few minutes. So if you hear me breathing hard, it's because I'm climbing. <laughs> I'll survive, but uh, we got uh, we get some elevation change, so it's pretty, it's fairly st steep in a lot of places. So again, this is a great, it's a nice solid trail and you could widen it if you wanted to and you could probably get a pickup truck up here <laughs> i'd want to have a winch on it just in case you got into a pinch <laughs> but if you have a an atv or side by side piece of kit so we've made it to the point where we got to kind of swing off the road and follow what is really more of a an atv or a jeep trail than a road the road behind me you could get a pickup truck easy enough. <coughs> From here, we would transition into the woods. It gets a little bo more bony, <coughs> and we need a little more improvement uh, to bring a four by four pickup truck up here. Now the person that is <coughs> selling the property, he did have a tractor up here seven years ago. And he was uh, spending the summer on top of Lombard Mountain. So you can get a small utility tractor up here. And with some improvement, you definitely could get a four wheel drive truck or a Jeep uh, up into this, into this property. But it's a nice walking trail <coughs> through a nice mixed wood forest. So I just stepped off the trail we're near the near the beginning of the property and this rock formation that's situated here according to the, the owner of the property when he lived here seven years ago there was a family of bobcats that were inhabiting this at least on a, an occasional basis it's kind of like a little cave you see that or not there's bobcats that were living in there that's kind of cool i see no evidence that they're here right now but they may may visit this from time to time when they're passing through this property is located in lakeville maine for those of you not familiar with lakeville lakeville is a small community 
just outside of Springfield and uh, the service center community for here would be Lincoln. Lincoln has a population of over 5,000. Springfield, probably somewhere around 450. Lakeville has a population of 105. That's year-round residents. <laughs> now, Lakeville is a destination and many people from all over the country own recreational properties in Lakeville. Because by the name, you can tell that there are quite a few lakes in Lakeville. <clears throat> This property overlooks Lombard Lake, which is one of the smaller of the many lakes in Lakeville. Lombard is about 225 surface acres in size and is predominantly a white perch and smallmouth bass fishery. <clears throat> in addition to Lombard Lake, <clears throat> you have Junior Bottle, Duck, Upper and Lower Sisseldopsis, <coughs> West Grand, and a few others. Of those, Junior and West Grand are probably the most widely known fisheries. They're cold water fisheries. They have trout, brook trout, lake trout, landlocked salmon, whitefish, all inhabited in their deep cold waters. The woods around here, have bear, moose, white-tailed deer, rough grouse, and the roadways that interconnect all the lakes around here. I utilize some of them in the wintertime as ITS snowmobile trails, and in the summertime, ATV trails. So outdoor recreation is probably the industry in Lakeville. <clears throat> now, in addition to that, one of Lakeville's greatest qualities is it has one of the lowest tax rates for property taxes in the entire state of Maine. <clears throat> the mill rate in Lakeville this past year was $3.80 per $1,000 worth of valuation which is one-tenth of the mill rate that I pay in the community that I live in. Now with that, you don't get a lot of services. You know, again, Lakeville is a small community. There's only 105 year-round residents. There's no local school. There's no local fire department. There's no local police department. But you do have fire protection provided by Springfield Fire Department police protection provided by Penobscot County Sheriff's Department. And if you're raising children in the town of Lakeville, your kids have a choice of where they want to be educated because it's a tuition town. So the town will pay tuition to whatever school you want to send your children to. So I mentioned this is a survey lot. These properties were carved out back in the uh, late 80s all around Lakeville. At that time, there was a, we had in Maine uh, a massive uh, problem with spruce budworm. And a lot of the forests around here, uh, uh, predominantly the uh, woodlands here were spruce and fir forest. And it was uh, kind of a cut it or lose it situation. And the uh, forest uh, foresters at that time, uh, the the, the method of eradicating the spruce budworm epidemic was to log it. So at that time, a lot of Lakeville, Springfield, Prentice was cut, I mean, cut really hard at that time. And then it was cut up into smaller parcels and sold off as recreational properties. This is one of the corners. It's marked here with a piece of rebar, quite a bit of ribbon here, so it's easy to find. It's kind of the southeast corner of the, of the property. I'm gonna see if I can find the other corners uh, during this video. If I do, I'll show them to you. But it is marked, I do have the survey plan. It is 30 plus or minus surveyed acres right here on the top of Lombard Mountain. 
And as you can see right now, this is what 40 plus years will get you in a main forest. A nice regenerative stand of mixed wood timber. There's quite a bit of beech, some mature spruce, like this tree over here. When they logged this back in the late 80s, it was too small, it was pretty merchantable, so they left it. But now it's, uh, oh, right, it's 16 or 18 inches at breast height. So this would be a great log to harvest for uh, two by fours and two by sixes, dimensional lumber. And that would be the market for that. Now that being said, there's enough mature spruce up here that if you wanted to, if you had like a, an Alaskan sawmill, which is, you know, a pretty portable sawmill attachment. It's kind of like a, a jig that attaches to a chainsaw. Yeah, and then you can uh, you can cut down logs and then mill them into dimensional lumber on site. You know, it won't be as pretty as lumber from a sawmill, but nonetheless, it's it's pretty good stuff. And you could do that. There's enough. There's plenty of wood here uh, to uh, make you know posts and two by sixes and two by fours and even and even boards to to build a, an off grid cabin right from material right on site. And then uh, there's plenty of hardwood here for campfires and, and wood stove fires in your cottage up here on top of the mountain for the rest of your life and then some. This is a nice, nice patch of woods. There's a lot of spruce here. And not a sound. We're, we're at an elevation here of about... Uh, 950 feet above sea level. The bottom of the lot is about 650 feet above sea level. So it is fairly steep in places, but up here at the top, you've got a nice plateau where there's plenty of area that a person could clear a small spot. And I'm gonna show you where the current owner cleared his location where he spent, uh, spent seven months in a tent living up here, which is kind of cool. And that would be a good location because you got, uh, with just a little bit of work, you could have reclaim the view that he had uh, opened up and the, the site is pretty level. So let's go check that out. Yeah, so I stepped back onto what was the main trail that the owner used to access his campsite up here on top of the mountain. We got it flagged here pretty well. And it wouldn't take too much work to make it so that you could, you know, you could drive a four-wheel drive vehicle up here. You'd have to cut a few trees, maybe pull some stumps and haul up a little bit of gravel. But for the most part, pretty straightforward. This is a just a beautiful location. If you're looking for solitude that you can access relatively easily. It has no right of ways through it. There's no roads through this property. There's just this trail that terminates on it, and it's just your trail. It doesn't belong to anybody else, and no one else has the right to use it at this point. So, <clears throat> this is about as private as it gets in today's modern world. You know, you're about 45 to 50 minutes to the town of Lincoln, which is where you'll want to do most of your shopping. There is a small store in in Springfield um, where you can get gas and you can get some basic items there. Uh, get caught up on the local gossip if you wish. That's where you'll get all the latest news. Right, the little convenience store in Springfield, Smith's Market. But this is uh, this is just a cool, cool place. There's quite a bit of sign of whitetail up here. I see tracks uh, through the through the leaves. We found a nice shed uh, a couple of days ago when we were up here. So this is uh, this is where some of the big boys come to, to hide out because there's nothing around. So uh, in order to kind of show you the potential viewscape that is available at this location, I had to, uh, I brought some climbing steps. I'll kind of show you that arrangement and then I'll show you the potential view. The uh, seller had cleared 
oh, half an acre or so down below me uh, when he uh, had his campsite here uh, seven years ago. But seven years of growth uh, is enough so that you really can't uh, get any view at all. You'd have to whack it all down again in order to see what can be seen. But from here, the view is pretty amazing. So let me turn this around. So there's the view kind of in to, the, to the north uh, right here, just off the plateau as it starts to uh, drop off. Again, there's about 300 feet of elevation change on this lot. So if you cleared some trees, I mean, you can have a magnificent view that just goes this ridge line after ridge line after ridge line uh, off into the distance. So you can see for 30 or 40 miles from here on a clear day. Uh, it's quite, uh, quite amazing. And here's a close-up of my arrangement. I'm tied off up here, and I brought some climbing steps, so that's the view from my, my perch. So in the comments below, if you could name one other real estate agent that's on YouTube in Maine that would climb a tree to show you the view, I'd like to know. So I made it down off the tree after getting a, kind of showing you the the view that's at least potential from this side of the mountain. Uh, if you don't like the view on this side, the plateau goes around. I mean, you could uh, you could pick a spot on the top of Lombard Mountain uh, because uh, this 30 plus or minus acres pretty much encompasses it all. <clears throat> so if you don't like the view in this direction, then I'll build your cabin on the other side. Just clear trees over there. But while I'm here, I was going to show you the equipment that I was using because I think it uh, it bears a little promotion out there in YouTube land. For those of you that don't know a bit more about my background, I'm Rick Terrio. I was a, still a licensed Maine master guide. I ran a lodge for about 20 years, guided hunters and fishermen uh, all over the Katahdin region of Maine. And during that time, I, I accumulated some uh, outfitting equipment uh, to make my job easier. And one of the best pieces of equipment I ever purchased was a product made right here. It was invented by a guy in Maine. Jim Stepp was his name, and Stepp is spelled S-T-E-P-P. -P. It's S-T-E-P-P. -P. And you can uh, look for the product that he invented. It's called the Step Ladder. And it's, uh, it's tree steps that are non-invasive. They don't attach, you don't, there's, they, in Maine, you're not allowed to uh, screw into a tree without permission unless you own it. Uh, so these attach with a, with a rope <coughs> wrapped around it and a special camming kind of knot, which was his trademark on the, so every step ladder set of steps. If you don't know how to do the knot, you can just look at the picture that's uh, stitched on the outside of the bag. But it works very well. It cams onto the tree. It's very solid. Uh, and you can walk your way up the tree by attaching these steps. You need a belt so you can uh, have both hands free as you do it. But it's an amazing product. Jim Stepp no longer manufactures these, but he has sold the product to another company. And if you Google the step ladder, you'll find a link. Uh, but if you really like good quality hunting equipment, uh, I, I can think of uh, no better uh, a method to climb trees than the step ladder. Uh, it's a, just an amazing product. So check out the step ladder on uh, on the internet. And uh, if you buy them and you like them, let me know. Yeah, so I'm walking along trying to find the rest of the corners of the lot. And here's what would be the northeast corner. And in this area here, it's predominantly hardwood. There are some big spruce still uh, scattered amongst here, but mostly it's beech. But right here is just a monster sugar maple, otherwise known as rock maple or hard maple. And this is a nice one. It's gotta be 30 inches or so at, at the butt. Cross maybe a little better, bigger. It's a monster tree. Beauty. I don't know if you can kind of tell or not here, but it is about a 45 or 50 degree incline here in this location. And lots of geological evidence of how Maine was formed back 
back in the day when the glaciers covered a lot of North America. You know, there's a, Maine was scoured out by the glaciers and some of the deeper lakes and whatnot. The shorelines are littered with these granite boulders like this and larger. And uh, Lombard Mountain is largely a big pile of granite. So, if uh, this 30 surveyed acres is appealing to you because you want to come up here and create a farm, <laughs> you probably want to look someplace else because this is definitely not farmland. But this is a great piece of property to have a little cabin back here or a tent platform. I think that's how I'd roll for me. I'd build myself a tent platform and I'd put in a, a privy, come up with some method of capturing water because you're not going to drill a well up here. But this is a great place to get away and have a campfire. There's a, literally, there's no sound here other than the breeze through the trees. This is, this is what life's all about, taking a walk in the woods. So if you're stressed out and you're looking for a place to unplug, well, the top of Lombard Mountain may be your place. So if you've been looking for an affordable piece of Maine, I don't think there's a better piece for the money than this 30 plus or minus acres right at the top of Lombard Mountain for $39,950. This was last logged about 40 or 50 years ago. The wood here is largely mature. Uh, the walking in the woods here is very enjoyable. I mean, there's very little brush that you have to kick, kick your way through because the timber is mature. This is a private location. You know, you're at the top of the mountain at the end of the trail. So if you see another soul up here, it's because you invited them or they're lost. Those are the only two options because this is, this is actually, this is the end of the road. But if you're looking for a place to get away, to pitch a tent, to build a cabin, you want to give Rick Terry, your main real estate guy, a call at area code 207-731-9902. And let's take a walk to the top of Lombard Mountain.